This is Code.org and we're looking at National Parks. Write a reverse method to reverse the elements in the park's name array. In my council.java, call the reverse method on my park's object to reverse the array. Call the park's print park names method on my park's object to print the updated array. Okay, so we have a lot to do. Let's take a look at what they gave us. Right now we have a file reader object. We've seen this before. What do we do? We pass the file name, which is National Parks. We then create a file data, uh, a value, a file object containing our file and a scanner class, a reader. That allows us to access and loop through the data. And we've seen this before, but we have these get string, get int. We can give this a number, a value, the length, and it will go through a file like National Parks and grab all these words that we want, which is great. So we instantiate a file reader object. We then create an array of park names called string, and we assign it all of the values, I assume, 62. Yep, every value in there. And now what we do thus far is we print the park names. They want us to reverse it. So this is going to be similar to what we have done previously. National Parks, let's take a look. Reverse. How do you reverse? So to reverse in array, you first of all are going to want to take the very first value and the very last value and flip them. Let's start there. So I'm going to do a traditional for loop here. For uh, int index is equal to zero. There's more than one way to do this, but index, I'm going to just set it equal to, and this is not going to work long term, let me be clear. But for now, park names dot length. Okay. And then I'm going to say index is going to be equal to index plus one, which means, hey, have the index increase by one each time. The fancy way to write that, of course, is index plus plus. So far, so good. And if you're wondering, Mr. Kaiser, what the heck does this do? Well, Bam, let's go use it over here because we're going to have to call this right here, my parks reverse. We're going to call right there. So now I'm already calling it and I can show you what it does. For now, guys, I'm going to comment this out just because I don't need it at the moment. Index, of course. And there we are. So here's all of our parks and what we're doing is looping through. We start at index zero, which is the very first item because arrays start at index zero. We never allow it to go past the end of the array. This array is 62 long as index is zero to 61. And we start with zero, we loop through. It says, okay, parks at zero index would be Zion. So it will print out that first. And then what do we do? We go hit the bottom, go back to the top, and we say, all right, what did index used to be? Index used to be zero. Zero plus one index is now one. Is one less than the length of the array? The array is 62, so yes, so we print the next one. All right, but that's not what we want to do. We want to flip these values. So now I'm going to create, although it's not entirely necessary, I think it will help. I'm going to say int start, or maybe should I say front? index is equal to this is just going to be equal to index int back index and this is going to be equal to the end point right so we want to grab the first item in the array and slap it swap it with the last one so now this would be equal to park names dot length minus the index however this has an issue the issue here right is park names length will print out will give us 62 because the length isn't the same as the index values index values start at zero so this is index zero and this line 62 is index 61 indexes start always at zero whereas the length is 62 because it's just counting the items so if we do this we're going to be past the end of the array because our first loop through index is zero the length of the array is 62, 62 minus zero is 62. And so if I tried to get something at the 62nd index of the array, we get an error. This is fixed by just saying one. What we're doing really is saying we need to take one away from this length for it to be va valid. And then we take away the index. All right, now I have the front and the back of the array. And then I need park names. And I'm going to do front index. Okay. And then I'm going to do park 
names back and x. So this will get us, well, something. Let me go back over here. I'm going to leave this print out, commented out still, but I'm going to put another one right here. And let's give this a shot. So this is super hard to read, but let me go to the top. We did start flipping it, right? We have it actually being swapped. However, notice right here what happens. We now have it duplicating its own values. And that is because we're only flipping the front and the back. So right here, the back becomes the front, right? The front becomes the back. So this first value, we grab the very last one, Acadia, and we make that at index one Zion. However, we're not saving Zion. Zion's now gone. It's now Acadia. So now we have Acadia at the front index and the back index. And then we loop through it, but it doesn't matter. We've already overridden it. So that's an issue. So what we need to do is keep track of that. Because I can now still do park names back index, of course. And oh, I need to set it to park names front index but this is there's a problem here that problem guys is that it's too late we lost this value we've already saved over the front index value it's gone it's now equal to the back index value so what we need to do is have something where we keep track of it so i'll say uh these are strings string old front value okay and i'm going to set that equal to this so this is the old value that was at the front of the array before we save over it right here. And now, instead of setting back index equal to that, I'm going to set it equal to this. At this point, guys, we still have a problem. And that is we don't stop in the middle, right? So this is actually going to work. We'll take that front value and the back value, and we will switch them successfully. However, so this is even hard to explain. Oh, I don't like the space. All right, so let me show you with a more tangible or something we can actually look at. Let me just throw in garbage here. Okay, I just added all of this, right? I created this string, zebra, fred, apple. I made park names equal to it. Don't do this, guys. And then I'm printing it at the end because I want to make my point here. Let's see. All right, now notice what happens. When we start, we flip them. Apple, Fred, Zebra. Great. We keep going. We're at the center point. Cool. Doesn't matter. Nothing happens. Then Fred, then Zebra, Fred, Apple. Hold up. Why? Why does that occur? Because we go all the way to the end. So once we get here, our first index, we flip Apple and Fred. So first time around, the back index, uh, the old front value would be equal to Zebra. And then the back value, or the old front value would be equal to, yeah, zebra. And the back value at this time is apple. So now we have flipped those two, and we assign zebra to the back, obviously. However, once we keep going, now what is front, uh, what is index equal to? Index at this point would be equal to one, which is Fred. So index is equal to Fred. Now park names dot length minus one minus the index of one. Well, the length of park right now is three three minus one is two the index that we're currently on which is fred is one so now they're both equal to one we end up not flipping anything hit the bottom back to the top now index was at one index plus plus so index is at two and then we drop in here now index of two so park names dot length is three minus one is two minus two is zero so now what happens? Well, the old value, uh, the front index is two. So now what's at the last index right here when we're at the end is apple. What's at the front index? So last index is apple. The front then, yeah. So what here is at the front of our list at this point? Apple. Now we go down here and we grab the back value, which is zebra. And now the new front value is zebra. And then we assign the old value apple to it. So we just redid, we just undid what we had already created, which means we need to stop in the middle. Okay. How do we do that? We need to calculate int mid is going to be equal to 
Now, my one concern with this is if we have five things in a list, right, or three things in a list, the middle point of those, you would want to stop before you get to the middle. Because if you have five items, one, two, three, four, five, you don't want to switch three, right? When you reverse this list right here, three stays in the same spot. Now, if you have an even amount, okay, right, even amount, you do need to go to here. You need to go all the way up to index two. Something really handy, though, is since this is an integer, even though if we have five and the length of this would be five, in Java, it drops the decimal for ints. So if I do five over two, which is what this would calculate, that would equal 2.5. However, since it's an integer, Java just kills this off no matter what, which is great because for an odd number, odd length array, we need to stop at this, this index. And for an even length, we would also as well. So this will actually work. Now I'm just going to flip this out for mid and get rid of this stuff. Well, no, I'll print it one more time for you guys. Oops, index is less than mid. And that's working great. So now let's get rid of this, go back to the traditional way and quit path. A to Z. I'm gonna return it to its original functionality. Not the easiest thing to do in the world conceptually, but we got it. Onward. 